deep within the cultist stronghold, you find yourselves at the Red Steel Forge. Endless hammering and prayers echo through the halls, and as you enter, the searing air of the forge halts you in your steps and overflows your spirits. Before you stands two crimson smiths watching over the charred corpse of the initiate. The ritual has failed, they say as they turn towards you. The blood of Bragi is on your hands, but fear not, for we will take it back. Now they unsheath their crimson blades. Hello and welcome to Bardscraft. This build is inspired by the Order of Red Steel, one of the cults featured in the Book of Cults by Windmill Slam Games. The Book of Cults is a hardcover book full of occult adventures, monsters, items and player options. You can learn more by checking out their Kickstarter page through the link in the descriptions. As a backer you'll have a unique chance to contribute to the project by making a cult of your own or even by sponsoring some of the artwork which can feature you or your favorite character. Alright, after I was done planning the diorama, I cut out the base. Then I started working on the support pillars. I cut simple square shaped bits from XPS foam. Legend says that only with the magical inscriptions of otherworldly patrons can a blade cut through XPS foam, but in reality you can even do this. I place the pillars into position to see how it looks. Pretty good, but I decided to cut some of the pillars shorter so they don't block as much vision. The plan is to only build walls between these pillars, the rest of the walls are just implied. Next I gently texture the bits using a ball of aluminum foil, after which I glued them into place using some PVA glue. That looks fairly good already. Remember, if you can't get started on building your terrain, just begin by making a few pillars, you can't go wrong. You don't even have to use foam for this, you can use wood or cardstock. Okay, the walls were made from thinner foam that I managed to cut out fairly fitting. Once I had the rough pieces done, I shaped them accordingly to my sketches. I also made some carvings, but decided that most details will be done later using cardstock. As usual, I textured the surfaces lightly, then glued the walls in place. Since the pieces didn't fit together perfectly, I pressed them together like this. Next, I opened an electric tea light. I'll try to use only these, the lamp and the battery. All of this casing would take too much room. I had a pretty good idea for how to attach the light for the forge's flame. I cut a small, battery-sized hole into the middle of the large wall. The battery fit tightly in. Good. Then, by making the wires of the lamp uneven in length, I was able to create a simple and functioning switch mechanism. If we can manage to get the lamp sturdily attached, the battery can be moved in and out to switch the lamp. I used a bit of foam and glue to attach the lamp. Here I would use hot glue, but it was missing. Time to make the main piece for the forge. Cutting curves is always a bit tricky. Still, I refuse to buy more tools, such as a hot wire cutter. Anyway, it doesn't matter if the cut is not clean, because I'll cover with cardstock soon.
Here I decided to make proper 3D effects by carving away the marked areas using my X-Acto knife. I glued the piece into place and then used one extra pillar bit to cover up the gap here. I continued building the forge fireplace. I'm sorry for butchering smithing terminology, but that's what it is. The fireplace is lined by a wall of bricks. I bent the foam and then cut out the individual bricks. If your foam won't bend, just cut fitting bits instead. I textured the slabs of stone, then attached them with PVA glue. I made sure to leave small gaps between the bits for greater depth. I realized the wall was a bit too low, so I made one more layer. A single curved slab of stone that makes little sense, but looks pretty cool. Okay, let's make the floor next. In order to make the cutting of the tiles, the curved tiles, easier, I made a fitting piece from paper first. The preferred material for the tiles is foam again. Other alternatives for making bricks and tiles are cardstock and egg cartons. Try it! Okay, let's check the fit. Good. Now that it was for real, I put a bit more effort into drawing the shape of the tiles. Beautiful. I quickly textured the foam and then carefully cut out the individual tiles. Uh, nope, I, I figured it's best to make the inscriptions first. Someone once asked me how I make such mystical inscriptions. I said that I just make it up as I mess about with the pencil. As long as it looks strange, it's good. Now I cut out the tiles, then I roughed up the edges pretty heavily to also reduce the size of the tiles. Next, the fun part is to glue these on. Very nice, we can now continue with the square tiles. I cut plenty of these medium-sized rectangle bits. Okay, since you liked my previous pep talk, I present to thee now lesson 3, purity. If you are anything like the standard YouTube addict, your internal reward systems are probably messed up. Motivation and heroic effort toward your goals are short-lasted or completely absent. Your epic, life-affirming ideas and unaccepted quests seem too difficult, so you refrain from taking the leap. Very sad. My solution. Revolt. Revolt against your weak habits and purify your reward systems. By leaving sugar, TV, mindless browsing and porn behind will you find greater purpose in hard labor high energy and tons of XP. Hedonism isn't glorious, pure action is. Good luck. Okay, back to crafting. After some gentle texturing, the floor is done. Next, I started working on the workbenches. First, I cut smaller pillars from foam. And this is where I begin working with cardstock. Cardstock, specifically from oats, is great for creating little details on your crafts.
once I had the to be metallic reinforcements done, I made the tables from popsicle sticks. With that done, I continued by making more cardstock details. These were a bit tricky, but after a few attempts, I got the pieces to fit nicely. Here we need two little holes for the ritual associated chains. And then we need just a few more bits. Alright, these simple cardstock strips added a lot. I finished the front of the fireplace with a curved bit. Some engravings on these pillars, then we can start painting. I began by base coating part of the floor and the pillars with black acrylic craft paint. The paint is slightly diluted and I made sure that all cracks got paint into them. Next I covered the rest with dark brown. Good, the base coat is done. Next I mixed a brown red and overbrushed the brown painted areas. After that I worked with a grey. I overbrushed most of the remaining areas, leaving only the 2B metal surfaces unpainted. This time I'll try a quick paint job. Next I just overbrushed everything with a tan. Let's see if it works. When working with color that is much brighter than the previous layer of paint, it's important to make sure that you're not applying too much paint. Okay, after some brushing I came to the conclusion that this worked. A good start. We'll touch up with washes later. The metal parts are brushed on with a metallic gunmetal paint. Now behold the ultimate way to make a miniature fireplace. I got my coals painted the bottom of the fireplace with yellow and orange. Then I prepared the coals and glued them in. The problem I noticed here was that the coals are of course not burning, which makes the fireplace very dark. The little light I have is not strong enough for the effect I wanted. This is a moderate failure, but acceptable. At least I have dirty fingers, ashes and coal that can be used for great effect. I smudged away as I applied more charcoal on my fingers. This goes everywhere. Better clean up after this one. Now let's see. Yep, yeah, I'd say that worked. Next I highlighted the metal parts with silver. Okay, bolts look great on metal parts, and they are easy to paint with white and a stick. If you are familiar with the epic miniature mushrooms, this is much like that. However, here it is important to have just a bit of paint, 
on the tip in order to create a good looking bolt or rivet. Too much paint and some of your bolts will just look like blobs of paint, not good. Try to make only partially round bolts for the best effect. With a straight cut toothpick you could even get tiny circles that look just like the reflection from the edges of bolts. Or then you can use a white pen or marker. Looks great, now we can start working on the tiny bits. Hammers are quickly made from spruce and sticks. I glued the handle and hammer head together with super glue. I made two hammers and one larger war hammer. The iron or steel bars were perhaps the least challenging to create, very fun. Next I crafted a tiny bucket with great effort, cardstock, super glue and some steel wire. If you came for the bucket, here it is. One large forge blower was made from a craft stick and some folded cardstock. Nice, I'll paint all of these soon when they have dried. Meanwhile, I made the chains that are hanging from the holes in the wall. I had no chain, so instead I twisted together steel wire and called it a chain. Good enough. I shaped the chains a bit and then glued them into the holes. I painted all of this tiny junk quickly, black on all the metal bits, followed by a dry brush with metallics. On the wood handles I applied a dark wash and the leather bit of the pump is painted dark brown, then overbrushed with brown and dry brushed with a tan. Finally I made the bolt or rivet marks with white, then I glued the bits into optimal positions. I have to say this looks pretty epic, and these are just a few sticks, think about that. Next I'm gonna work with a wash I mixed from these oil paints and white spirit. You can make your own very easily. I applied the wash over almost everything. The grey stone surfaces get some nice color and I can darken the two bright areas. Metal parts get a nice aged finish, perhaps it's rust. When working on the walls and pillars I applied the wash more around the lower areas and especially in all the corners and cracks. What am I doing with an airbrush? We shall now try to make glowy inscription effects. For this I used an airbrush. This was sent to me by one of my kind supporters on Patreon. Best to make some use out of it then. First I lightly sprayed some orange around the inscriptions I made in the stonework. I also sprayed some around the fireplace. Perhaps I can make it better. Probably not. Next I used yellow. I attempted to spray this in the middle of the glow. Ok, I think this worked. That's enough airbrush practice for today. Thanks to Windmill Slam Games for sponsoring this build. Now they are giving away one copy of Terrific Travels and their first Monsters and Magic book. You can participate in the giveaway by clicking the link in the descriptions. Don't forget to check out the Book of Cults on Kickstarter and feel free to pitch some of your ideas on cults and monsters. Okay, that was a good build. I especially liked the coals and fire. Make sure to like and subscribe to be purified by the fires of the Red Steel Forge. Click the links and watch another video. Make your offerings to Bard's Craft on Patreon if you like the videos very much. Thank you and goodbye.